In this video, we're going to go over the Auto Retopo process in 3D Code Sculpt Workspace, which can also be accessed in the Retopo Workspace as well. I have here a glove that is comprised of multiple subcomponents. Let me scale my Vox Tree Layer panel up a bit. The first rule I should mention about Auto Retopo is, number one, it works only on one layer at a time. Anything that's relatively simple in shape, 3D Coat will do an exceptionally good job straight away without any additional help. My goal in this instance is to generate a single mesh, even though I have all these sub layers. I'm going to show how you can have 3D Coat weld them all together in a copy. What you see here is such a copy that I created previously. Now, I also should mention that very thin objects, such as wings, 3D Coat can struggle with when you're trying to generate an auto retopologize mesh. I'll hide that. I'm going to create a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon here, and I'll unhide this main parent layer. When you merge objects together, as I'm about to do, or any merging operation, it's a good idea to use voxels as opposed to surface mode. In surface mode, you can merge layers together, but you oftentimes will find intersecting error messages, and it takes longer to calculate in general. If we're talking about merging simple shapes together, that's okay. But anything that has some degree of complexity, I would definitely try to use voxel mode. And just as a general rule of thumb, it's much more trouble-free than working with surface mode. So with that stated, the other thing I want to point out, if you have never worked with voxels before, it's a completely different creature than surface mode. Surface mode is all polygons, whereas voxel mode, you're dealing with volumetric pixels. There is an adaptive outer mesh that we see in the viewport, but what you're actually working on is the volumetric pixels themselves. The adaptive mesh is just a secondary thing that 3D Coat applies so the viewer can see it, because you, the viewer, will never see the voxels themselves. When you're working with voxels, think Photoshop. And what I mean by that is, in Photoshop, as you know, if you work with a very large document size, let's say 2K or 4K, something of that sort, you don't really need to increase the dots per inch or the resolution on that document. It already has enough native resolution. However, if you're working on a letter size document or a business card or something like that, and you still want a high degree of resolution with your images or graphics, then you definitely need to increase the dots per inch to ensure you have the appropriate amount of resolution. 3D Coat is exactly the same way when you're working with voxels and only when you're working with voxels. So the larger the scale of your object, consider it a larger canvas. The smaller it is, the smaller the canvas, if you will, or the smaller the document size, in a sense. How you would increase the resolution, or the dots per inch, so to speak, is to click the Increase Resolution icon here at the lower part of the VoxTree Layer panel. And you want to do this before you actually perform an operation, or before you import an object, so that you have adequate resolution when you perform that operation. So. What I need to do is make sure that I have enough resolution to capture all the details. If I do it now, you'll see what happens. Merge visible. It does it quickly, but when I hide the original layer, it just doesn't have enough resolution. So I'm going to leave this layer here, but I'm just going to clear it. Let's try it again. Let's increase this. Go to about 16. There is no hard and fast rule in this regard because 16 may be way too high if your object is scaled up. Okay, so you just have to get a feel for it. One way to do that is to observe the amount of polygons here at the bottom in the status bar. Another method of evaluating the density of the model is to toggle wireframe on with the W key to visually inspect it as you make changes to the resolution. So I'll unhide this original layer and right click, merge visible. Okay, so it's about 2 million polygons. That's not all that bad. Let's hide that, Let's zoom in. So it did a fairly good job. And essentially what it did is weld all those individual parts into a copy onto this new layer. That means the original layer and all of its children are completely undisturbed. So let me now hide the original. I'm going to go through the Retopo workspace. And I've got a copy here that I previously created with this thin surface. As long as you have some degree of thickness, 3D Coat can do a decent job but it can struggle, as you can see here, along the edges. What I want to do is close off the very top, and I want to make it essentially a solid object. Later on, I can go back and delete all these polygons that are in the center here. We'll go back to the Sculpt Workspace, and what I'll do is go through the Primitives tool. 
I'm going to choose a freeform disk that I used previously. I can transform it using the transform lattice toggle option. Or you can go to the E panel. You can also hit the E key and choose something like a freeform lasso. Select all the points and use the gizmo this way. So I'm going to push it into place. Scale it in. Another option you can use instead of moving these control points is to use just a standard primitive. And once you've applied it to a layer, you can trim the excess away. Let's move this up again. You can bring the thickness down here. I want to apply this to a separate layer for the moment. Give it plenty of resolution. That'll be enough. And I'll apply it to this separate layer. Now let's go to the cutoff tool. I can ghost the glove object and use the closed spline or any of these other shape marquees. You can brush or you can click to create individual points. I'm going to try and brush. All right, let's hit escape to drop the initial creation of the spline. I can click on the points if I need to tweak them. So now, if I were to hit the Enter key, or go to this little toggle and hit Apply, it's going to cut everything inside the shape. I want just the opposite. So to do that, you need to hold the Shift key. So I'll hold down the Shift key and hit the Enter key. Let's hit Escape. Okay, so let's unghost the glove layer. Got a little bit of cleanup here. I could I'll just hold down the Shift key and smooth these areas. That's it. All right, so now if I'm ready to go ahead and merge these together, I could do the same thing, merge visible, or hold down the shift key. When I hover over the right side of the layer, I see a little move icon. Holding down the shift key, I can just drag that right onto the layer I'm trying to merge it into. Now, I should mention that we want to avoid having any high frequency surface details on an auto retopo object. We can use it, and it can probably do a decent job, but it will improve the results if we try to simplify things as much as possible, because any surface details, the algorithm is going to have to evaluate. In this case, we don't want that. So again, the more simplified you can make it, the better. So to smooth all these surface details, if this is a really low polygon model, then smoothing might alter the shape. It might shrink it a bit too much for our purposes. But in this instance, we have a fairly dense copy. So smoothing will simply smooth or shrink the details. Let's go to the bottom of the tool panel and click Smooth All a few times. And you can see all the stitching detail that we don't need is melting away each time we click that. Also, if there are any small pockets inside, that melting or welding process you get with voxels can be very beneficial. If I hit the W key for wireframe, I can see there is an internal pocket that I need to close. We can see one large pocket as well as a few others here as well. These can cause problems when Auto Retapo begins to evaluate the mesh. Let's go ahead and smooth all one more time. And I always like to fill voids before I run Auto Retapo if I've done any merging of objects together. Right. So, yeah, very necessary step if you want to get a clean result. I think I'm going to switch to surface mode for the moment. I want to try and smooth this out. And I find that using the, the anti-bump smoothing option is the best. And I like to use this third brush, Alpha, which is very sharp. And it acts kind of as a polishing brush. And it's very subtle. So let's turn wireframe off. And I'll right-click and drag up to increase the smoothing intensity. And just lightly brush over these areas. So it's not smoothing too much. It's just smoothing out the surface irregularities. And that's precisely what I want. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just trying to help and simplify so that I can get the cleanest result possible. So now we have things pretty much set up. However, I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup here. I can use the fill brush, either in voxel mode or surface mode, it doesn't really matter. 
come along and just fill this area. Let me go back to voxel mode now. I'm going to choose 2 million. Let's smooth all one more time. All right, so now we have a very simplified version of all these individual parts. Now that we have completed our model prep, let's pick up in the next video where we will initiate the auto retapo process.